It is safe to assume, I believe, that everybody here in this church this morning would very much like to have two things. Now there are other things you'd like to have too. But these are primary and basic and everybody present wants them. And they are health and happiness. And let me tell you something, you've come to the right place to get them, for sure. Now, I don't necessarily mean Marble Collegiate Church. Any church will provide them. For in a church, the laws of health are taught. Mental health, emotional health, physical health. And in every church, the laws of happiness are taught more than any place else in the United States of America. That is for sure. Now, when we talk about happiness, we're not talking about some Pollyanny sweetness and light deal. It's strange how some words can be destroyed or vitiated, like uh, love, for example. That's one of the greatest words in the English language, but Hollywood has successfully messed it up. <laughs> but love is the strong, vital, vigorous, tough word. And so is happiness also. I looked it up in the dictionary to make sure I knew what happiness is. And Mr. Webster knows all about words. How any one man knows so much about words, I never could figure out. <laughs> but he's pretty good. He says that happiness is felicity. Do you know what felicity means? Well, it means happiness. <laughs> it also means aptness. What's aptness? It means happiness. It means with it, really. And felicity means that you do the right thing in the right way at the right time. And you're a felicitous, isn't that a beautiful word? Felicitous. Well, would you like to be healthy and happy? Of course you would. I was in a certain place in this city the other day and was seated temporarily when a young woman walked across, pulled up a chair and sat down beside me. She didn't give me her name, or if she did, I didn't hear it. I would guess she might be 20 years old, 21, 22. A very pretty, sweet, smart, attractive, strong girl. And I liked her right off. <laughs> so she said to me, I want to ask you a question. I want to live a long, healthy, 
happy life. How do I go about doing it? Well, I said, uh, that's a big question. It's stalling for time. <laughs> yes, yeah, she said, I know it's a big question, but I really want to know. So I looked at her and I thought how nice she is. So I took my finger and I put it on her forehead like that. And I said, the answer to your question, young lady, is keep it right in your head. Keep your thoughts good, not bad. Keep your thoughts decent, not indecent. Keep your thoughts full of faith and not doubt because it is in your thoughts that is determine whether you will be happy or unhappy, whether you'll be healthy or unhealthy. Now, there was a professor once of English at Yale University. I didn't go to Yale, but I knew him slightly. He was probably uh, 30, 40 years ago, 30 years ago, one of the most attractive personalities in this country. Everybody loved him. His name was William Lyon Phelps. They called him at Yale, Billy Phelps. And he said, the happiest person is he who thinks the happiest, most interesting, finest thoughts. And that is a fact. Then there was a professor at Harvard. I didn't go to Harvard either. And he was there a long time ago. He's probably one of the few wisest men this country ever produced, the smartest one. He was the father of American psychology as you know it today, which is a big industry, psychology is. His name was William James. And he says, Repeated thoughts wear a kind of psychic groove in the mind. A groove that gets deeper with every repetition. You see what that means? When you think you can't and you tell yourself you can't, and you tell other people that you can't, you've made a groove in your mind, psychically. And every time you do that, the groove becomes deeper until ultimately you can't. That is the way it goes. Oh, if you tell yourself that you're going to fold up when you're about 65 and your health's going to leave you, that forms a little groove in the mind. And every time you tell yourself that, the groove gets deeper. And the next thing you know, you come to church uh, on a cane. <laughs> or you can't even get here at all and your health is destroyed. Now, a long time before William James ever wrote, there was a man named Ralph Waldo Trine. He wrote a book called In Tune with the Infinite. It's one of the classic books ever produced in this country on the human mind. And I've been reading it for years, and I find new wisdom in it every time I open the pages. 
Mr. Chine says, would you remain always young? And would you carry all the joyousness and buoyancy of youth into your maturer years? Then have care concerning but one thing, how you live in your thought world. And the Bible says, Whoso trusteth in the Lord, happy he will be. And the Bible also said, says, if ye know these things, happy are you. So if you want to be healthy and happy, think right. Have this mind in you which was in Christ Jesus our Lord, it says the Bible. Now, what kind of a mind was in Jesus? No hate, no dirt, no negativism, no failure, no sickness. It was the healthiest mind ever in human history. You can have the same kind of mind and when you do, you have health, vigor, and happiness. Now, you see, happiness is dependent upon harmony. And you get harmony out of the kind of thoughts that you think. Harmony affects your emotions, it even affects your physiology. There used to be a man called Little Bill Miller. He was the physical trainer for the Cincinnati Reds. This was back when the Reds amounted to something. <laughs> when they produced championship teams, and on the side, he was a tennis coach. He would get a gore or a boy, and he would say to him, now the first thing in being good at tennis is to think right. You must think that you can do it, and then you must think happy thoughts. You must think harmonious thoughts. And he had a girl who had all the technique down finally, but she couldn't deliver the ball properly. So he said to her, Mary, I want you to hum or sing the Blue Danube Waltz as you swing the racket. So she got in tune with the music. The harmony was in the mind. The harmony was in the voice. The harmony was in the emotions. The harmony then came into the muscles and she made beautiful shots and returns. She was healthy and happy because she was harmonious. Now, I belong to a golf club up at Pauling, New York. I very seldom play because I got too many other things to do. But I enjoy it when I get at it, but I'll never be written up in the sports pages. <laughs> but we had, a, we had a pro up there years ago named George Ferrier. He was a Scotchman and he was a philosopher. Now, in those days, a golf lesson cost $10. I suppose it would be 25 now. And I used to take lessons of George, not because I particularly wanted to learn anything about golf, but he got over so many wise ideas that I could use in sermons. 
And this one cost me $10. I don't know what you put in the collection plate, but you can find the plates on the way out. Because this is worth its weight in gold. He had a New York City tense, uptight businessman, business executive. And he would get out on the weekends to play golf just as another duty. And he didn't do very well at it, and he didn't enjoy it very well. So one day George said to him, you know, the trouble with you is you're an unhappy man. And in order to play golf well, you've got to be a happy person. He said, happiness lubricates the muscles. And he said, Joe, what you need to do is to get lubricated. Joe immediately headed for the clubhouse. <laughs> but the pro called him back and he said, I don't mean that kind of lubrication. He said, Joe, can, can you sing? Well, he said, no, sir, I, I can't sing. Well, don't you know any songs at all? And Joe said, well, I know one song. Let me call you sweetheart. He must have belonged to the Rotary or Kiwanis Club. <laughs> all right, he said, Joe, what I want you to do is to walk around the tee, singing at the top of your voice, let me call you sweetheart. Well, Joe said, I never sang in public in my life. Well, the pro said, this is hardly public. So he said, do it. So he finally, in a timorous way, started to sing. Then he got into the spirit of it, and he went around the tea singing, let me call you sweetheart, I'm in love with you. That's the first time I ever sang in public in my life. <laughs> I'm sure I'll never be invited to join the choir. You know what he did? When the coach put up his finger, which was the signal to go into the stroke, he hit the ball in a beautiful stroke and it went 200 yards straight down the fairway. He learned the joy of the game because he found harmony and happiness and health. You see, it all ties together. Now, it's only November now, but come springtime, there'll be hundreds of people in this congregation <laughs> singing, let me call you sweetheart, on many a, a golf course. <laughs> you see, that is what being happy is. It's being in tune. It's being organized. It's being sensitized. It is felicity. And uh, Jesus says, these things have I taught you that you might know my joy and my happiness. Now, there are other things that are involved in, in happiness. And this has got to be said. If, if we've got people sitting out here that aren't happy or healthy, it could just be that you got something sour in your mind, something that has disturbed the balance and the equilibrium something that has siphoned off the ecstasy of human existence. Now, the old-time theologians call that by a three-letter word, sin. Or it's called evil, E-V-I-L. 
It's funny, it just occurs to me that evil spelled backwards is live. You get rid of evil and uh, you'll live. So if you've done any wrong, you get it straightened up. Get the good old honest, decent, clean thoughts back again. Well, you say, I didn't, never did much, but I just did a few little things, but they don't uh, cut any ice, so to speak. Well, here's a letter I got at one of our offices. It's from Oklahoma, the man's name here, and his street address, and the zip code. He wanted to get it straight. Now here is what he writes. About 30 years ago, I ordered a book from Norman Vincent Peale and never paid for it. <laughs> now, I don't sell books. He didn't order this book from me, but he probably ordered one of my books from our office. But he said, could I depend on you to forward this check to him? I can't be happy until this and a few other things are made right. Thanks. He signs his name. Now, 20 years, 30 years ago, a book that would be selling for $8.95 today would probably have been about uh, $3.95. But he really wants to clean it up because his check was in the amount of $20. That must be interest. <laughs> what were the few other things that Jack did? Well, this man has been unhappy. I guess he'd be unhealthy too because you can't be unhappy without being, to a degree at least, unhealthy. So he wants to clean it up. Some years ago, there was a beautiful old lady who used to sit down here. I'm not pointing any particular pew, but she sat right over there. And she was a dignified dowager type of the old school, elegant. She wore a hat, so when they wore hats, and she always wore gloves. She was a New York lady of the old school, very fashionable. And she used to call up my secretary, Mary Creighton, who d deceased now, and Mary had a perceptiveness, and she says, this woman is very unhappy about something. You better talk to her. So I saw her here one day, and she says, Dr. Peel, I'm unhappy, and I don't feel well. I said, ma'am, why don't you tell me what's on your mind? She said, I've never told anybody. I said, that's the problem. So she confessed a sin which she had committed years ago. I didn't ask her to define it or tell me anything about it. I said, haven't you asked the Lord to forgive you? She said, yes, but I don't get forgiven. So I brought her in here. There wasn't anybody in here. I made her kneel down right there. And I put my hand on her white hair and I said, I'm a pastor, and I'm acting in the name of God. Ask God to forgive you again. And she did. Now I said, ma'am, forgive yourself and go and sin no more. I used to see her until the day she died, one of the happiest human beings I ever knew in my total ministry in this church. 
These things have I spoken unto you that your joy might be full. This is a way to be happy and healthy. Our Heavenly Father, we pray for us all because we all need to be prayed for. And if there's any evil in us, cleanse it, we beseech you. And help us to forgive ourselves and get into harmony in the spirit that health and vigor and vitality may be in our minds in our souls and in our bodies through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.